folkies! My name is Emily Valken and I play Scandinavian folk music on fiddle and nickel harpa. In this video I will try to give you an overview of slang polska and also some tips to play it good, good for dancing and good swing. Before we get into the subject I'd like to add my usual disclaimer which is I know only what I know meaning that um, I may make mistakes, I may say things that are not fully right and I'm also talking about a very huge topic therefore making generalities and not going into all details and exceptions so don't take what I say for a bible it's just a global view of the subject also for people who are not uh, speaking Swedish or understanding it I will write in the description all the words, the Swedish words I use, um, names of places, of types of tunes, regions, and so on. So, no worries. So, slang polska. Slang polska, what is it? It is a type of polska. Polska being a huge family of tunes in 3 4 uh, in Scandinavia. Slang Polska is related to the dance, which is called also Slang Polska and which you may have seen, which is two people holding hands, one hand, two hands, very often crossed arms and walking together and doing some figures like going under the arms or uh, turning on a spot. Polska, I will use this word here in this video as the big family of what Polska is, like there are many, many types of Polskas and um, for saying the precise type of Polska um, which is regular and which for the dance people, a couple work, uh, walk on three and one and then turn I will say regular Polska uh, you can also hear sometimes Binkwa Polska it's pretty much similar and um, slang polska can also be called slangis. It's like its little name used at least in Sweden. So if I say slangis or regular polska or polska, they are a bit different terms. How to differentiate a regular polska from a slang polska? These are two different things. And to show you the difference in the feeling of the music, I will play for you the Polska Eftestare numero 8, which is a Polska which is played in the two ways Slang Polska way and regular Polska way. between slang polska and regular polska. The first one, the most obvious, would be the tempo. Slang polska is a little bit slower than regular polska. I would say slang polska is around 90-95 beats per minute and to like 100, while regular polska would be more 105 to 115 like roughly, it can vary a bit, but uh, for having a good dance tempo, those would be the good dance tempo, tempos, tempi, tempi, for um, slang polska and regular polska. The other super big difference is that regular polska has a heavy one, 
lighter two and mid heavy three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All beats have their importance, but three and one stick out a bit more. While on in slang polska, it's very even, all beats are as heavy. It's a bit like if you were playing the, some 1-4, not 3-4, but 1-4 actually. It's not, but every beat is down and steady. And then the feeling is very different. You have heard um, the feeling is not moving the same, like you don't want to move your body the same to slang polska and regular polska. Um, I have talked about the heaviness, there is also some bouncing. In regular polska, you would do like You would bounce a lot, especially this type with dotted uh, rhythm. You would really bounce a lot up and down. Slang polska bounces less. It still does, because it's Scandinavian folk music and almost all tunes and types of tunes do bounce, um, but it bounces less. It's it's a bit more even. It's still bouncy, but not as much. And you can also see that there is kind of a backbeat effect. But be careful, backbeat can be understood in many different ways and this kind of backbeat is extremely different than the backbeat that you can have in reggae or punk, for example. Because in those types of music, the backbeat is stronger than the beat. Which is not the case in slang polska. In slang polska, your beat is still the most important thing. The backbeat is just giving a bit of more energy. So you have your beat and then took beat, backbeat, beat, backbeat. You're not playing Then it's not slang polska anymore and it's very difficult to dance. And the last thing which is for me very typical of slang polska is that we have seen in polska it's like bouncing. In slang polska, although you still bounce a bit, you have a big big driving forward feeling. Like I'm going somewhere. It's driving forwards. It's not where I'm, I could almost dance on the spot. No, no, no. Slang Polska is really going. Here comes the metaphor of the day. For me, Slang Polska is a bit like riding a big and powerful horse, which absolutely wants to go faster, but you don't allow him or her. You hold the, your horse, you have a lot of energy, so you go forwards, but you, you hold not go faster. Not too quick. So there is a kind of tension between driving forwards, but holding the tempo to keep it. Well, we'll come back to that. So, a big question you can have is, yeah, but regular Polska, like Binkho Polska, this type, and Slang Polska are from the Polska family. How do I distinguish them? Sometimes it's not super clear. Well, the first good thing to use is the name. If you have a tune which is called Slang Polska, obviously it's a Slang Polska, not a regular Polska. So you have to play it in the slang polska way. Also, if you have a tune which is called Polonaise, it is very probably a slang polska. Polonaise being the old word to say actually polska or slang polska. Um, then if you don't have the name or if you want to be more precise, you can look at the map. Here I put kind of roughly the slang polskas I play. And except for the Dorotea slang polska, which is very well known and coming from Lapland, a bit of a weird bird in the family, 
Um, you can see that all the slang polskas almost come from the southeast of Sweden. So, um, if you have a tune coming from one of these areas, it's probably a slang polska. The regions I know are typical for slang polskas, there might be more, that's the tunes I know. Um, considering the tunes I know. Skåne, Småland, a bit Vester, uh, yeah, Vester, Öster Jutland, Öster Jutland, maybe Vester Jutland as well. Gotland, lots of Lake Polskas, oops, see there you And the, the region for Slang Polska is Södermanland, also called Sörmland. And if you have a tune coming, a uh, Polska, sorry, coming from Mörke in Södermanland, 99.9% .9 sure it's a slang Polska. Really. And then another thing you can use is to distinguish the three types of Polskas which exist. We usually consider there are three types. And the first one, that's for regular Polskas, straight Polskas, not for um, short first beat or something. The first one would be trio Polska in Swedish, triplet Polska, obviously with triplets. This kind of Polska is straight, it's never a slang Polska, never ever. It's Polska from the north mostly, not only but mostly, and this will never be a slang Polska. So if you have triplets, bye bye. Then you have a second type, which is Ottonels Polska, eighth notes Polska, or uh, quarter note, Polska? No. Quarter note? No, quarter notes are those ones, right? I'm a bit confused with English terms. Whatever. Those. This can be a straight Polska, a regular Polska, but 98% sure it's a slang Polska. This is usually an easy type of Polska. Mine usually come from Gotland. And yeah, it's kind of ancient or simple music and very often slang Polska. So if you have this type, it's probably a slang Polska. And then the last type, which is a bit tricky, is Sextondales Polska. 16th notes Polska, obviously, with 16th notes. And when you have this pattern, Ticky 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 ticky. Um, it can be a bit tricky because in this family you have lots of slang polskas and you have lots of non slang polskas, regular polskas. So to know if you have so if you have one of those tunes to know if it's a slang polska or a regular polska, I would tell you cross with the other things, cross with the name and cross where where it's from with where it's from. Sorry, if it's from Södermanland. Well, it's very probably a slang Polska. Careful. One region I have noticed has a lot of Sextondale Polska is Helsingland, there. But there are hardly ever slang Polskas. I don't know, probably other regions are like that as well, but I know for Helsingland, usually they won't be. We will come back to those details in a moment. So, when you have a slang polska, how to play it so it's good for dancing, it's good swing? Well, first, basics. Listen. Type slang polska on YouTube, find bands that are playing slang polska and listen to them. Go to dance evenings with people from one of the slang polska regions playing and dance it. You don't have to be a good dancer, just for like understanding how they play. Notice the details. And my other advice, as usual, is move. Put on the music and move with your body. Stomp, move your arms, move your head, walk around, try to feel what is happening. And then take your instrument and try to copy what they're doing. Are they putting a lot of weight there or less here? And try to copy that. Analyze the music and try to copy it. Then a thing that you can use, that can help you a lot, 
is to do this kind of um, bowing pattern that I'm, I'm calling Wuwa Wuwa. I'm also calling it the moustache pattern <laughs> because you're doing this shape with your arm. This. So, or two waves in a way, or two U's. I see it as a moustache. Mm -hmm. Here I'm talking to bowed instruments. If you're playing a uh, wind instrument, saxophone, flute or something, I guess you can adapt this by what is down blowing a bit harder and what is up, like not breathing but like taking back a bit and then blowing harder and a bit less, although you don't want to jump an octave. So it's probably a bit more tricky but you can probably adapt. Uh, guitar, I'm sorry I don't know how to adapt that to an, an instrument that has no continuous sound but I would suggest, as usual, uh, find musicians who play Slang Polska on guitar and check how they are doing and inspire yourself. Back to the bowing pattern. Try to take your bow and do this shape with it. It may take some time, and when you feel kind of comfortable with your hand, you can think you are drawing maybe, you take your bow and you do the same thing on a string. My hand is really doing this pattern, so I recommend you to go in front of a mirror and just like look at yourself and try to do this thing. is bad, no worry, you're not practicing the sound, but the movement and the swing. You can also actually take two strings. find a note that fits and try to do the pattern at the same time as the music is playing or singing as you want. This might help you have this like accent on the beat and a little bit of backbeat woo -wah, but not woo -wah. <laughs> and also be careful with one thing I am doing this using weight not speed so don't be afraid to dig into your string don't be afraid to put weight in your bow really go and release go and release go and release go and release not fast stop fast stop no 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 then if you have a, a sextondel polska you can learn the traditional Swedish slang Polska bowing. Well, actually it's Sextondel bowing, because you can also use it for regular Polska. And this bowing is called famil familiarly, familiarly, currently, don't know, um, Tiyatata. It is binding the two first notes together and separating the two other ones. Bind, separate, separate. Don't look at that for now. Tiyatata, tiyatata. Um, if you have sheet music, this is very easy because you just take your sheet music and every time you see four sixteenth notes, you just bind the two first ones on your paper. If you don't have sheet music, if you play by ear, you do it mentally in your ear. Every time you have those sixteenth notes, the two first ones are together and the other ones are uh, separated. And I suggest that you first practice very, very straight, like strictly to that. You really, every time you have those four notes, 16th notes, you really bind them separate, separate. To practice just the bowing, you can choose, for example, a little scale, like this one. And you practice. 
practice it. Two together, separated. Two together, separated. And you practice that quicker and quicker. And when you are used to that, you can take the scale down, for example, or another key, or take a tune and practice it. Of course, of course, when you will play for real, so not practicing, but playing, um, you will not follow this pattern absolutely all the time. Try to stick to it, but you might find places where it's not practical for the bowing or for changing strings or for the melody itself. It doesn't sound very good. So in those moments, maybe you will use this pattern there, tia tia, which is also quite common uh, in slang Polska. And it's actually the same as vua vua that we did before, <laughs> just two times quicker. And it can be very helpful to get back your bow or something. And you might also find other patterns, but I would recommend you to not use two specific things. First thing is try to not play like this, because you will have a tendency to stress out because it's fast and you will have a tendency to like be unprecise with the rhythm and go quicker or stress out and get like tensed muscles and this is not good for your playing. And also, I would recommend you to not bind four and four or more, because then you lose precision and clarity. Then you play. And if you're not super well timed with your left fingers, you will lose precision. So I suggest you to keep it, like, do some bindings, but not too long, and also don't separate everything. This tia tata is good because it puts a weight on the beat and then stays clear at the end of the beat. Important when you practice those bowings, start slowly and increase the speed only little by little. Because if you do fast from the beginning, you will just stress out and get tensed. And this is not your goal. And also keep it short. The quicker you're going, shorter your bow. Like literally, when I play 16th notes patterns like that, I use that much on my bow. Really, same on the fiddle. So keep it short, keep it little, don't stress out. If it's a bit too fast for you, for your abilities or something, it's better to take the tempo down a bit. The dancers can dance a little bit slower. They can be fine with that. And then you will feel comfortable. Some other tips for Slang Polska in general. Take care of your tempo. Especially in Ottomil uh, Spolska, they are pretty easy usually and pretty slow in the melody, so we have a tendency to just rush all the time. Don't. Keep your tempo. Practice with the metronome or ask dancers to dance on your music and ask them, am I going quicker and quicker? Am I regular in my tempo? And also be careful with the last note of a phrase. Very often, the last note is a bit longer, so we have a tendency to just like shorten it because we want to get back to the melody. We find it uninteresting. Don't! Let it ring and take time to <gasps> breathe. And once more, listen. Listen, dance and analyze the good players and maybe dancers as well. Dance and music can really help each other to get better, so don't hesitate to jump on the dance floor to understand some music and reverse. Um, I would like to give you a tune to finish, which you may know already, which is the Slang Polska from Barszebek, south of Skone. It's a pretty well-known Slang Polska, and I think it's very good, because in the A part you have this wuwa wuwa pattern, and then during the whole tune you have tia ta ta tia ta ta, and maybe a bit of tia tia as well, patterns for the bow, so very good. And also, as a bonus, in the B part, for fiddle and nickel harpa players, you have uh, some arpeggios, like a rolling bow, which is super fun to play and a very good exercise as well. 
tip if you don't manage to see my bow wings because I play in a tempo that is too fast for your eyes to see, YouTube has a slow down function. Use it. So, Slang Polska from Barschebeck. <laughs> found good things for your playing, uh, helpful tips. If you have any question rego regarding something I said which was not clear or you need more explanations on something or you found a very big English mistake or something, just don't hesitate, ask me your questions. I will really really like to answer to them, I love nerdy questions. And now I would really like to say a big 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 thank you because um, first, you have watched this video until there, and also the previous video I made, the first one on short first beat polskas, got a lot of very, very interesting comments, ideas, critics, suggestions, very good feedback. And I'm always very, very happy when I get feedback because I can know how you received what I'm trying to transmit. So if you have anything to say to transmit to me, don't hesitate. I will really, really like your feedback, even if it's negative or critical or anything. Um, so don't hesitate to ask, to criticize, to get, give me feedback. And with this, I say to you, folkies, keep on playing and see you next time.